Hey guys, what's going on? Payne here once again, and welcome back to another episode of my Manchester United career on FIFA 14. Now, it's just not good enough, is it? What happened this past Sunday? Manchester United against Sunderland. Wow. I never thought after last season's shamble of a performance against Olympiacos. You guys remember that in the Champions League when we played them away? I never thought I'd see a performance like that ever again. Well, I was proven wrong after this past Sunday at the Stadium of Light against Sunderland. Wow, it was just dire. I know that we've got an injury list of up to eight first team players. Obviously, that's not going to help our chances. It hasn't helped our chances of getting off to a, a flying start with the new Premier League season. But I remember seeing our fixture list when that was announced before the season even started. It was just like, well, we've got two months of games that really United should be winning. But it seems as though we, we've got a new manager, obviously. But it's the same old problems from last season. You know, we, we just lack confidence. It's almost as if the players are just scared to get forwards. Be in the face of the opposition. Take more risks. Have a higher tempo. Don't waste time on the ball. If they don't start playing like that, United, they're going to find themselves in that rut. We're going to be getting a repeat performance from last season just without David Moyes. And whilst I think about it, over the last two games now as well, you know, Van, Van Gaal has been known in the past to be animated to be on the touchline why isn't he doing it now for United instead of sat back in that comfortable chair taking notes get yourself on the touchline make your presence known as soon as you do that players I think they they'll grow in confidence they'll they'll want to work for their manager because they know if they don't then once they get back into the dressing room they're going to get a, an absolute bollocking and that's what they need we need to see more of that from Van Gaal he can't just keep sitting back. It looks as though Giggs is the manager and Van Gaal is the assistant just taking the notes. So I would like to see more of that. I mean, look at him when he was managing Holland back at the World Cup. He was on the touchline the majority of the game. Whenever the team would score, high five, shaking hands and so on. We need to see that. We definitely need to see that at United. I'm sure it will come, but I have a feeling what he's doing is actually assessing the team in these competitive games. But... That's where he's going wrong because you need to be getting off to a good start in the league, especially a team like Manchester United. I mean, you've got teams like Chelsea. They completed their signings just after the World Cup. They got them gelling in pre-season. And now they've got a head start over United. And we're just gonna, we're making things harder on ourselves. I'm just hoping these new signings that Van Gaal has brought in will help United get Champions League football for next season. I think Herrera's settled in. He, he certainly showed signs of that against Swansea. It was a shame that he was took off before the second half. And Luke Shaw, I expect when he returns from injury to keep up that level of performance that we, we saw of him last season for Southampton. And I'm sure you're all aware that we've recently signed Marcos Rojo. The last time I uploaded a Man United career mode video last week, we were still in the process of putting the deal through Manchester United. So it's happened now. He is now a United player. And I'm, I'm looking forward to what he can bring to the team. And I think at the moment, any defender is welcome at Manchester United. We need them in abundance, definitely. And with just days now to go until that transfer window shuts, we're on the verge of completing the signing of Angel Di Maria. It's amazing. But it's going to cost United up to 59.6, 59.7. It'll probably rise up to 65 to maybe 75 with add-ons and so on. I think it's a fantastic signing. Can't wait to see what he's capable of doing at Old Trafford for Manchester United. What can he bring to the team? And some will say it's not wingers United need. It's defenders. It's central midfielders. Yes, that's true. But on the other hand, we do need wingers because we seriously lack quality down both our flanks. I mean, Valencia, not so bad. But Ashley Young, terrible. We just need to get rid of him. Either drop him from the first team altogether or just release him from his contract because he's just not helping Manchester United out. I mean, we saw a big example of that against Sunderland this past Sunday. He's just incapable of tracking back and working in that system that Van Gaal wants to, to go with. Whereas someone like Di Maria has that quality to actually track back. And I'm sure he will. I mean, we saw it when he was playing for Real Madrid last season in the Champions League final against Atletico Madrid. He did it numerous times. So if he can bring that to United, as well as, you know, Di Maria is fantastic for dribbling with the ball and getting in between the, the opposition's defence. If he can bring that to United, I think it's going to be full-on attack. 
plus having Mata working alongside him as well. With Mata playing in that central attacking mid role, Mata relies upon pace. He relies upon players running past him so he can shift the ball from side to side. And seeing that United aren't playing with pace at the moment, Mata isn't playing to the best of his ability. So with someone like Di Maria coming into the team, I think Mata will benefit from that. I think some of the other players will be able to benefit. And I think if Fidel makes his move to Old Trafford before the transfer window shuts, because speculation has reopened up about him, the bookmakers, they're, they're putting bets on for Fidel to follow the Argentine to uh, Old Trafford. It could happen. Van Gaal, in his uh, post-match interview after the game against Sunderland, dropped his name. Maybe we can use that as a sign. Maybe it can be taken out of context. But it's known that Van Gaal likes Vidal. And it's known that he, he would like to add him to the United team. If that can happen, I think, I think we're looking at a strong United team. Especially if Van Gaal can get the team attacking and pushing forwards like the Manchester United way. Instead of this slow possession game it just doesn't work with our team we need to be p pacey we need to be quick and I think you know adding Di Maria to the team I think that just shows Van Gaal's intentions really so what a sign of Vidal would be for United It'd seriously strengthen our team you know well we all know that Vidal whenever he plays for Juventus he always holds that strong presence in central midfield he's like a cog in the uh, the machine well he is the main cog in the machine and he just keeps things ticking over and that's what we need at United because cleverly Fletcher are unable to do such a thing and then if Vidal does make his move to Old Trafford then I don't think United will have to sign another player then until maybe next season or the season after because the quality we would have in our team then I mean Di Maria, Vidal, Rojo, Luke Shaw, Herrera I, you know the list goes on I think we would uh, certainly be title challengers next season um, if Van Gaal can manage to implement his new system and the players get, get used to it and start working along with him and get attacking once again, playing the Manchester United way. So I hope Manchester United will be able to put these poor performances against Swansea and Sunderland behind us. We've got MK Dons tonight on, on the Tuesday that I'm recording this in the Capital One Cup. I'm hoping that we don't struggle. You know, we should be coming away with a win there. It would be so disappointing if we got knocked out or we had to go into extra time against MK Dons. We should be, it should be a walk in the park really against MK Dons. No disrespect to them whatsoever, but I mean this is Manchester United, the most successful team in England. You know we should be beating MK Dons. United's next game after that then is against newly promoted Burnley. That's away from home. And I'm hoping we'll be able to see someone like Marcos Rojo in the team. Maybe Herrera back from that slight injury that he picked up against Swansea, I think. Or was it an injury he picked up in training? Not too sure. And Di Maria, I can probably see him making his debut for United against Queen's Park Rangers at Old Trafford. How amazing will that be? It's just good to see a higher level of quality being added to the team now. It's definitely what we needed. It's positive. And I think with those players given time working with Van Gaal, I think we'll eventually get there. And But there is no room, no excuse to be putting in those type of performances that we were used to last season under David Moyes and that we've known over the last two games in the Premier League so far this season. Can't happen. We need Champions League football for next season. We need top four, top three. We need to be there this season. We can't be any lower than that. Otherwise, questions will be asked. Anyway, guys, we are coming to the end of this episode. I do hope that you've all enjoyed watching the highlights of what's been happening recently in my United career mode save here on FIFA 14. I know the results weren't the best and there weren't many goals scored in this episode. We drew against Sunderland, just like real life, but it ended 0-0. Absolutely nothing happened there. And then we lost against Newcastle. We beat... Dynamo Moscow in the first round of the uh, knockout stages of the Champions League so it's not too bad. Anyway guys once again hope you've all enjoyed and I'll see you all very soon for the next episode. Thanks for watching.